Okay, I just got a sign that says we're recording. My name is Henry Lorian. I'm at the University of Colorado. Welcome, everybody. Nice to have you here. Uh, if you would please just mute your audio for now uh, until you're ready to ask a question, then you can unmute yourself. Uh, if you would share your video, I think that'll increase uh, participation. And if you want to ask a question to Diana during her presentation, I think the raise your hand feature is the best way to do it. And she'll try to track that. If she misses it, I'll let her know. And then I'll also let her know if she misses a chat question. Okay. Uh, so with that, Diana, take it away. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you to the ADP series organizers, Ayang and Stephen, and thank you, Henry, for moderating today's session. I'm Diana Choi at Purdue University, and I appreciate you took your um, time out of your busy day today to participate in today's session. The title of the paper is Heterogeneity in the Financial Reporting Effects of ASC 606 Adoptions, Evidence from an Industry-Focused Approach. Uh, the paper is co-authored with Sewa Kim at Columbia University and Su Wang at The Ohio State University. So as you all know, AAC 606 Revenue Recognition Standard is arguably one of the most important accounting rule changes in decades. Despite its importance, identifying the impacts of the standard is empirically challenging. Uh, first of all, the effects are likely to be heterogeneous by different industries because of the differences in the operating environment and sales contract design. For example, the impact might not be significant for firms that sell products and recognize revenue at the point of sale compared to firms that sell multiple goods and services across multiple reporting periods. Also, there are other standards that became effective around the same time Lastly, the standard applies to almost all U.S. companies. Therefore, it is hard to identify a proper control group. And other st studies, they compare firms with different adoption timing of the rule or materially effective firms to not materially effective firms. So for these differences in sample compositions and treatment control group definitions, they may lead to mixed inconsistent findings um, in the existing studies. For example, Chong and Chuangana 2021 finds that informativeness of earnings increases after adopting the 606, but Li and Li 2020 finds lower earnings predictability. Similarly, there are mixed findings for earnings management and liquidity for different studies. In our paper, we use an industry-focused analysis and ask the research question, does the adoption of ASC 606 improve financial statement comparability, informativeness, mapping of revenue accruals to cash collections and disclosures? So our industry-focused analysis is comparing the two industries that are economically closely related to each other but one is industry more affected by the standard, which is the software industry. And we compare software industry to electronic computer industry, which was less affected by the ASC 606 standard. Um, this approach allows us to conduct in-depth analysis using manually collected data, but we do understand that there is a Caveat. So our study is subject to caveat that the findings in the software industry are not likely to be generalizable to other industries, and we are agnostic about the determinants of heterogeneous effects of ASC 606 across industries. So to understand why there is a difference and why computer industry was less affected by the ASC 606 standard. Um, I have to I'll let you know why uh, the standard effect was different because of the standard before 606. So first illustrating the software industry um, standard for revenue recognition before 606, firms were required to establish BSOE, which is vendor specific objective evidence to allocate the contract consideration to each element and recognize the revenue upon delivering each element. 
However, because establishing DSOE is difficult, companies tend to defer all the revenue recognition, defer ASC 606. For electronic computer industry, before ASC 606, there was ASU 2009, 13, 14, which were adopted in 2010. This removed the VSOE restriction, so firms didn't have to apply that. So essentially ensured the removal of the restriction of VSOE, it, VSOE is similar as the ASC 606 standard. And our identifying assumption is that on average, electronic computer firms will sell more tangible products and therefore are less affected by the standard than the software firms. Uh, uh, Hi, hello there. Great job Hi. at the paper. Great job at the paper. I just have a few questions. One of them is the more conceptual one and the other one relates to your industry choices. Um, the first one is that, um, so we have the principle-based approach replacing all the sta um, industry-specific standards, and the spirit of the standard setters is that we want it to be more comparable, not only across sort of firms, but also across industries, internationally, etc. So after reading your paper, I just had a question in mind. Does your paper then go on to say or speak to the effect that it might just be be better for focusing on industries rather than um, economically or more on a more wider basis, because I see that comparability within the industry, according to your results, improves. I, I think we have to take consideration. I think in our paper, we want to emphasize that we have to understand the details of each industry specific situation and computer, they were less affected compared to software industry. and. I think as a mosaic, we have to understand the specific industries, especially software. We know that it has been impacted by ASC 606 significantly. So I think that is the first place that we wanted to look into. And understanding the literature in terms of balancing out um, industry-focused research and also industry-wide um, research is, I would say, both important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And my second question kind of relates to the, the, the two industries themselves. So uh, there are some common elements in the two, for example, sell through accounting and contracting costs, which both of them I think are equally impacted. Um, they equally impact the two industries. So do you think those differences would, would fizzle out in your analyses or they'll be held constant? So it'll be great if we could look into the specific contracts, but that is impossible <clears throat> for us to see. So I actually don't know how we personally, I do expect that software industry would change their contract, but the part no, part no, not that, Yeah, yeah, not the contract itself, contracting costs treatment. I think you refer to this in your paper as well and um, sort of commissions being capitalized. That's right. like one of the measurement right. concepts. So and that, account kind of relates to the void the um, the vendor specific evidence in the sense that it's part of variable considerations. I was just wondering if these two influences are quite salient to both the industries and kind of dilutes the control group argument. Um, so I, I I would say that it will impact both industries, but. I'm not sure how it'll be impacting. Um, so I, I cannot see how the impact would work out. So yeah, that, that would be my view on that. But yes, um, the 606 did include the provision to capitalize all the related costs to um, help generate the revenue. So that will be one factor that is different from um, 2009, 13, 14 provision. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Um, so uh, our, our main idea for looking into the industry-focused approach is that software industries and electronic computer industries, they are both considered IT firms. So they share similar supply chains. They provide both software and hardware products. Um, there is no specific definition um, in terms of how we can define, but 
we can um, look into software firms as those companies that have main revenue sources that are software products and services rather than tangible products. And uh, electronic computer firms would be companies that sell tangible products like computer-like devices. Um, so examples would be Apple Company, HP, and AMD. So here is an example of the revenue recognition disclosure for um, software company, Electronic Arts Inc., which is an American video game company headquartered in Redwood City, California. So as you see, they note before AC606 that they had a bundle sale on multiple element arrangement. And because um, they do not have BSOE, they had to defer their revenue. So that was before 606. And after 606, they say that sales of games with services are generally determined to have three distinct performance obligations, software license, future update rights, and the online hosting. Since we do not sell the performance obligations on a standalone basis, which is AAC 606 requirement, we consider market conditions and other observable inputs to estimate the standalone selling price for each performance obligations. So as you see, um, the firm is disclosing that they allocate the transaction price to the multiple performance obligations based on their relative standalone selling prices and this suggests that revenue recognition of software firms are significantly affected by the ASC 606 uh, standard. And here is an example of Apple, which is an electronic firm. Um, as you see, the company allocates revenue between these deliverables using relative selling price method. And because the company has neither BSOE nor TPE for these deliverables, the allocation of revenue is based on the company's ESPs. So ESP is indicating the estimated selling prices, which is similar to the standalone selling prices under the ASC 606 standard. And as you see there, uh, 606 after disclosure, um, we don't see much that describes the change of it. So these examples suggest that electronic company, computer firms can be a suitable control group for our empirical analysis. So here is a quick overview of our paper. Um, after discussing ASC 606 in more detail, I'll discuss how we validate our two uh, treatment and control groups by looking into the critical audit matter disclosure and looking into cumulative effect on retained earnings. And then I will discuss about the accounting attributes that we find. And lastly, move on to the liquidity and revenue recognition disclosure um, from our supplemental analysis. Uh, Fred? Hey, Diana. I thought your idea of using the critical audit matters, the CAMs, as a validity test that the software industry firms were more affected by this. I thought that was a very novel idea to do that. Oh, thank you. But I think I read that you could only observe that in the post period, correct? Correct. That is correct. Because the CAM disclosures came out after the right. 606 mm -hmm. went into effect. And mm -hmm. I wondered if you could look at the international setting and look at the key audit matters, the KCAMs, um, as a supplement to that. And I, I assume that the revenue, it was IFRS uh, 15, the international standard uh, was equivalent essentially to uh, 606. But again, just to look at the frequency of software and computer electronics uh, internationally pre-post, if that would give you a few more observations. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you, Brett. Um, briefly talking about AAC 606, in May 2014, the FASB issued the standard and the standard became effective in 2018 for most firms. So this is a shift from rule-based to principle-based accounting, as we have discussed, and likely provide managers with increased discretion and judgment in financial rich reporting, uh, which may not lead to improvement in financial reporting. Um, the standard establishes a unified framework for revenue recognition by requiring these five-step process, first identifying the contract with the customer, second, identifying the performance obligations in the contract, 
Third, determining the expected transaction price, which is the standalone selling price. And fourth, allocating the transaction price to performance obligations. And lastly, recognizing revenue when a performance obligation is satisfied. So this chart shows the uh, revenue recognition guidance um, over the years, the evolution of the standard. So the blue box shows the standards for computer industry and the red box is for the software industry. FAST 5, as we all know, is um, the revenue recognition standard that um, implemented, uh, that required firms to recognize revenue when it's realizable and when it's earned. So after this standard, um, SOP 91.1 appeared for software-specific standard. So this standard um, implemented that firms would have to recognize revenue for license revenue um, whenever it's delivered. And for service revenue, it is rep uh, recognized uh, proportionally over the service contract period. And 97, SOP 97.2 uh, appeared after a lot of software companies were bundling their, um, their products and services. So it required firms to establish the BSOE and that was codified later by topic 985, 605. And for computer industry, the ASU 2009, 13-14 um, um, removed the requirement for BSOE, while software industry didn't have that requirement. And next we had the topic 606. Right? I'm sorry. I I was a little bit confused by FAST5. I thought that was lost contingencies, and I could be wrong because now it's all codified, right, to have that historical reference. But mm -hmm. I didn't know if you meant the SAB is the Staff Accounting Bulletin. Topic 5 was the SEC informal guidance about, you know, revenue need, needing to have objective evidence that it's earned and realized, realizable. At okay. that point. So I just wanted to check your reference if that should be SAB. Yeah. Topic 5 is FAST5. Okay, yeah, I will check that again. Thank you. So uh, looking into our sample, our sample companies are companies with non-missing revenue and asset information from 2016 to 2019, so two years before, two years after, and we use uh, SICH codes between 7,300, uh, 7, 7372, following service uh, 2014 paper to define software companies and electronic computer firms, we use Fama French 48 industry codes equal to 35, but we exclude SICH um, code 7373. We also collect software companies' performa data and the adoption fiscal year information from Edgar Fowlings and supplement the information with audit analytics, accounting pronouncements database. We also obtain financial data from CompuStat, um, IBIS, and CRISP. And um, for CAM data, we obtain it from Audit Analytics. So here is our sample selection. So after removing um, missing control variables and everything, we find that we have 414 firm and 5,798 firm quarter and 1387 firm year observations. I'll skip on the descriptive statistics. So to check on the parallel trend, we examine the economic performance of software and electronic computer firms over the sample period to identify any distinct pattern. And we plot the revenue um, total revenue, income before extraordinary ordinary items, net income, and operating cash flow. And all of these variables, we find a clear parallel trend up to uh, 2018, which is when most sample firms adopted the AAC 606 standard. So this finding suggests that um, software and computer companies, they both experience similar trends 
of the economic performance before the 606 standard. Um, to further validate that um, looking into computer firms is a proper control, we look into the critical audit matter disclosure. So as Brett mentioned, um, because the CAM disclosure appeared during the uh, post period of uh, during the post period of our sample period, we can only observe the post period. But we find that for software companies, they had more CAM revenue related CAM disclosures compared to computer industries. And also, when we look into the overall sample period for the retained earnings cumulative effect, we find that the retained earnings were significantly more impacted by the ASC 606 standard compared to the computer industry. And also, when we run the regression using the control variables, as you see here, we find that software industry experienced significantly more CAM um, disclosures for revenue and had more impact on the retained earnings. So overall, these results support the implicit assumption that ASC 606 had a greater impact on the software industry than on the electronic computer industry. Now, um, I'll move on to the main analysis for looking into comparability and informativeness and mapping of revenue accruals to cash collection. So for looking into comparability, we relied on DeFranco et al. 2011 and If and Young 2012 measure for looking into similarity of accounting functions to translate economic transactions into accounting data. So first step, we estimated the equation by the individual firm pre and post ASC 606 periods by running the first regression. And then to estimate the two equations to compute the similarity of accounting functions of firm to the two firms, we run these two regressions and define the accounting comparability between these two firms as the negative value of the absolute difference um, between the predicted earnings using um, these functions. And lastly, since we are looking into a difference and difference, we run an equation, uh, the equation five, for measuring the comparability across the two industries for pre and post ASC 606 periods. So here is the result that we find. So the first two regressions shows the results for software industry, within software industry and within computer industry. So we find that software industry experienced um, increased comparability within the industry, but we do not find that result from the computer industry. Then when we compare software company to uh, computer industry, we find that the interactive variable for post and software is significantly positive, suggesting that comparability increased more for software firms than computer firms after the ASC 606. Um, to also look into the parallel trends, we plot the um, coefficient for the interactive variable with the software and indicator variable for each period. And we find that the coefficients before the 606 adoptions are close to zero and the increase appears in the post period. So this shows that software and computer electronic firms experience similar trends before the 606 adoption and the effect appeared in the post period. Next, we look into the informativeness of the ASC 606 standard by looking into the uh, returns, which is um, the abnormal cumul uh, annual cumulative market adjuster returns uh, adjusted by the value weighted market index. So we run the earnings, the net income, and interact that variable with post period. And we further de decompose the earnings by revenue and expenses to see where the results are 
where the market is reacting from. Lastly, we run the Performa analysis. Um, so after we hand collect the data for Performa earnings and um, the 606 earnings, the change of it, we see where the results, where the market is reacting from. So showing you our hand collected sample, the Performa is the numbers um, that companies disclose without adopting the 606. So this will be the numbers for 605 revenue um, recognition standards. And they also disclose how much they had to increase or decrease um, to meet the 606 standards. So this will be the change of the 606 effects. So table five shows the results for software and companies so looking into the post and earn interactive variable, we find that the market reacts from the software sample, but we do not find significant um, reaction from the computer industry. And further decomposing into revenue and expenses, we find that the positive market reaction is stemming from the revenue. So in summary, the association between the stock returns and earnings becomes higher after ASC 606 for software firms, but not for the electronic computer firms. And this suggests that the informativeness numbers were improved upon the 606 standard. Now, looking into our hand collected sample, we find that the market reacts both to the performa earnings, and this will be the 605 earnings and change of earnings will be the 606 earnings. So the market reacts both to these earnings, but they react stronger for the 606 earnings. And when we look into the hand collected sample for revenue and expenses, we find that the reaction is stronger for the revenue um, 606 numbers. So this shows that the informativeness uh, where the investors are reacting to is the 606 numbers. However, we do not find the results from the computer industry. So again, this shows that informativeness of electronic computer firms' earnings and revenue have not changed upon the 606 adoption, but software firms' earnings and revenue became more informative. Uh, Stephen? Yes, uh, that, Dan, that, that first regression you have, which is, it looks like a, sort of a Basu reverse regression, you just have earnings in the... Earnings in the uh, as the uh, explanatory variable. Um, as we've said a number of times in this uh, ADP, that's a double entry system and there's a lot of other accounting information around. And there's also a balance sheet. So I always, always worry that you know, with a double entry system, when you just look at earnings without looking at the balance sheet, you're actually missing something out. So before or after, there could be different deferred revenues, there could be different receivables, even unbilled receivables like, the, uh, like Boeing and so on, okay? So right. um, I think you might give that some thought. Okay, yes, yes. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so similar as our prior um, plots, we plot to see whether um, there are a parallel trend for the informativeness. And we find that, so this is the plot for software industry. Compared to computer industry, we find that the increase is more appearing from the post period. And for computer industries, there are not much change before and after the 606 adoption. Okay. Uh, we also look into the mapping between revenue and cash collection and investigate whether the alignment between revenue recognized under ASC 606 and actual cash flows from the transfer of goods and services have improved. We measure um, how well the different revenue accruals map into past, present, and future cash collection following Myers et al. 2021 paper by running this equation for each industry for pre and post ASC 606 periods. And with the revenue cash flow mapping measure, we estimate the next equation to look into the mapping. Um, here, table seven reports the results of the equations. So looking into each industry, we find that the mapping between revenue 
um, accruals and cash collection improved for software industries after 606, but we do not find that from computer industry. And this suggests that the effect of AFC 606 on the mapping between revenue accruals and cash collections became better for software industry looking into the last equation um, compared to the electronic computer firm um, industries. Um, here in figure two, we also plot the estimated treatment effects of ASC 606 on the, the measure that we looked into. And we also find that before the 606 standard, um, the coefficients were all close to zero, showing that um, there were no effect. Um, the similar trends existed before the pre-period of the ASC 606 standard. Lastly, we looked into supplemental analysis of looking um, liquidity measure and the revenue recognition disclosure. So for looking into market liquidity, um, we looked into log am Amihud measure, the natural lower of them of the quarterly medium of Amihud's daily liquidity measure computed as the stock return divided by the trading volume. And we also looked into the log bid ask spread, uh, which is the le natural logarithm of the quarterly medium of daily quota spreads measured as daily closing bid and ask prices divided by the midpoint. Um, here, table eight reports the results of estimating the equation. And we find that um, software industry increased um, liquidity but we don't find much result from computer and looking for log bid ask spread. We do find a result here, but it shows that it is more mixed evidence for computer industries compared to software industries. So these results reinforce our inferences on the ASC 606 effects on improving the financial reporting. Similarly, we plot the estimated treatment effects of the standard, and we find that before the standard adoption, there were uh, all the differences were close to zero. So this shows that we had a similar trend for both computer and software industries. Um, next, we look into revenue recognition disclosure. We manually collect the recognition section in the 10 case, and we focus on the disclosures and the notes to condensed consolidated financial statements of part two, item eight, financial statement supplemental data. And we examine the effects of ASC 606 effects on the quantity and quality of the disclosure using the following regression here. So we look into the, dis, um, the disclosure length, and we also look into the table, uh, whether companies included any figures as a table format. Table nine shows the results. We find that software and company both increased their disclosure length. And comparing these two industries, we find that there is no difference in the disclosure quantity. And looking into the table inclusion for the 606 standard, we find that both um, industries increased their tables. But looking into the difference between these two, we don't find any significant difference. So this suggests that the improvement in disclosures does not necessarily reflect the change in the decision usefulness of the counting numbers that we have looked into. Lastly, we look into the revenue recognition disclosure. Uh, we look into the comparability using the cosine similarity measure and run this main um, equation. And we find that within software industry, the cosine similarity measure indicates that the disclosure comparability increased. And also we find similar for the computer industry. 
However, when we compare software industry to computer industry, we find that the improvement is more from the computer industry. So this finding indicates that the improvement in disclosure similarity does not necessarily uh, translate into financial statement information comparability. Okay, to conclude, um, we find that the adoption of ASC 606 is associated with improvement in financial statement comparability, informativeness, and attributes of reported revenue for software industry relative to electronic computer industry. And we find that firms in both industries increase the quantity and quality of revenue recognition disclosure and the comparability of revenue disclosure improved after the ASC 606 adoption. This suggests that the improvement in disclosure does not necessarily imply an improvement in the decision usefulness of accounting information. And the industry-based approach provides a powerful empirical setting to identify the financial reporting effects of the ASC 606 adoptions. Our findings suggest that the more principle-based approach under the ASC 606 is associated with improved decision usefulness of accounting information and equity market liquidity. Finally, our paper suggests heterogeneous adoption effects of the standard ASC 606 on financial reporting for firms in different industries, and this illustrates the importance for controlling for underlying economic comparability and pre-existing accounting differences. Uh, our next EDP event will be November 15, Tuesday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, Brent from Penn State will present the paper, Current Expected Credit Loss, CECL Model, and Analyst Forecast. Thank you very much for your participation and thank you for the feedback. Thank you, Diana. Very nice presentation and thanks everybody for your participation. So Candy, I think we can end the recording now. And once the recording is over, if anybody wanted to ask a secret question that you didn't want to go onto 